All right, this week on Camera Talk, where are we going? Well, we're kind of, well, kind of splitting between a couple of continents here. We are paying a little visit to Germany. And who lives in Germany? Zeiss. That's right, Zeiss, Zeiss, baby. Um, but we're not actually visiting Zeiss. We're visiting Zeiss's product, which is built in Japan. I'm turning Japanese, I think I'm turning Japanese, I really think so. so. It's kind of a collaboration thing between, you know, Sony and, and Zeiss to create this. What the fuck is that? This is the Zeiss Distagon 25 millimeter F2. It's a badass. You're a badass. Badass, baby. That's right. And uh, is it in any good? Yes. What do you think, Dylan? Any good? Yes. Yeah. It's pretty good. So uh, why don't we find out how good, and we'll find out together. So grab yourself something to eat or drink. Get yourself comfortable. Adjun! And let's get it on. Here I am, V-A-M Green is always coming down This is Camera Talk with Dr. Scott and his little co-host Dylan <laughs> who's outside watching some kitty cartoon stuff on YouTube He'll maybe come in, he maybe not. He's a finicky four-year-old. We'll see if he's really a truly a good co-host or not. But anyway, just as the intro said, this week we're looking at uh, probably soon to be a um, vintage lens uh, classic. It was launched in 2015. So we're not that far off from it being a 10 year old lens already. But anyhow, what are we talking about? Well, it is another Zeiss masterpiece. It is the Zeiss Badass. Badass. 25 millimeter F2. It's a Distagon design, uh, which is their term for retrofocus design. What you talking about, doctor? Renamed from back in the Carl Zeiss uh, Yina days when they called it the Flectagon. And I've done videos on that. I have a 35 millimeter uh, Flectagon. Uh, when they moved it to West Germany, the Oberkochen, however you say that, um, they changed it to Distagon. And uh, I also have a 35 Distagon uh, Contax Yashica. Yashica! 35 1.4. Anyway, who cares? It's a Distagon design. Anyhow. And it was designed for um, Sony E mount in 2005. What? No! <laughs> Woo! 2015. <laughs> 2005. Oh, we're talking about really going back in time. Um, and, and again, it's a, it's a Zeiss design, uh, but it's made in Japan, you know. Uh, so Zeiss did all the, uh, the hard work and the Japanese just made it. But anyway, they made it for, for Sony and it plays well with the uh, Sony camera body uh, lineup. Anyway, it is typical um, Battis design you know I have the uh, also the 85 1.8 um, and I'm quite happy happy with that it's uh, also a badass and you know the design of it just the shape of uh, of the lens itself is is quite sexy so sexy it hurts as far as lenses go it's all metal, a uh, little plastic here and there, and the lens cap and the hood, uh, so forth. But hey, it's still a, a Zeiss lens, and it's 
a nice lens. Anyway, how well is it uh, constructed internally? Well, the specs on this thing are 10 elements in eight groups. It has five aspheric lenses out of those, uh, out of those 10 elements. So half of them are aspheric. Um, it's closed focus is 19 centimeters. Not bad. That's how you use it. For again, uh, a prime lens. It is, uh, the, the, um, aperture blades are nine, count them nine rounded aperture blades. So it keeps its, uh, Bokeh balls, relatively round. Say everybody have a seen my ball. As, uh, as it stops down. And it's 335 grams, so it's, it's light. So it's short and light. Um, and F2, you know, is, um, you know, fast enough. It's, uh, you know, it's obviously not 1.4 or 1.8 or you know, all the fast, fast 1.2s and 0.95s and so forth. But Whatever. those would be a giant lens if they were. So F2 is still plenty, plenty fast. So anyway, it's, um, it's got a good reputation. You know, it's, as I said, it's nine years old, soon to be 10. It's, um, it's kind of well loved among the, uh, the users out there who have one. I haven't, you know, I've done my research on it and really haven't found anybody who doesn't like the lens. Now comparing this to Sony's native, you know, G Master lineup, it's that's a 24 1.4. So it's not a you know, it's not a true head-to-head -head comparison, but this one does outshine the G Master in several areas. Same same but different. And the G Master outshines this one in several areas. So it's kind of a you know, it's a little trade-off here and there. But other than that, you know, um, on the lens itself, there are no switches or dials or anything else on it. There's an OLED or OLED, uh, as people call it, um, display here, which, which um, again, displays the distance and your depth of field. Uh, as you're using the lens in, in manual focus, which uh, there is a um, focus ring here, which is rubberized. A lot of people don't like it, but one thing if you can complain about it would be that. Um, but again, the, 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 uh, the OLED display is kind of cool, but nobody uses it. What's the point? Uh, it's a minimalistic design, let's just say. So anyway, there's, there's nothing to it. There's just a uh, Zeiss label. There's an E-mount with a little blue dot where you're supposed to mount. Sometimes that can be tricky, especially if you're in a dark situation trying to find that, uh, that little dot in there. Um, Maybe a tricky. And other than that, it just has, you know, baddest 25.2, the serial number made in Japan. And um, it's a metal mount. And it is weather sealed, has a blue gasket um, to uh, keep out the elements. So, what are you trying to say? And that, you know, there's not a whole lot, uh, not a whole lot to really, to really talk about the look of it. Like I said, it, it looks cool, uh, and of course, the, it has the uh, the famous Zeiss T Star. Um, coating uh, on the lens itself, you know, the red T-Star, uh, which has been around since the 1930s or so. Um, other than that, yeah, it just said Zeiss, uh, you know, the, the uh, faceplate, uh, Distagon 25.2 with a 67 millimeter uh, filter thread on it. So you can add, uh, you know, um, um, ND filters or other kind of uh, CPL filters or or maybe even another hood if you, if you want to put a different hood on than this one this one um, is a decent decent hood um, it it locks in place I mean it's that's not going anywhere you know it's it's pretty tight so it doesn't have a lock as in the uh, the G master does 
uh, it locks it locks its uh, lens in there, but it's a pedal pedal design, and just like all the other Batis um, lineup. So it's um, again, it's it's a nice it's a nice uh, structure. And other than that, um, it's autofocus. If you want to talk about that, the autofocus on it is pretty snappy. Am I still in the thumbnail? Uh, it finds acquisition on the on its subject pretty quickly. It's a silent motor, you know, for those who may be considering this for uh, video, which many people do. It's uh, even if you have an external mic, you won't hear the uh, the motor inside. It's very silent, and again, for something that's ten years old, that's that's pretty good. For it being a wide-angle lens like this, the um, distortion on it is is decent um, just mild you know pin cushion distortion uh, but that's gonna be seen mostly close up and again in today's with today's software out there your editing software you can correct for that anyhow uh, speaking of video it does suffer from uh, focus breathing right there. Right I need a little there. breather now I don't go shooting movies or anything like that, so that's not going to be a concern for me. Some people it may be, so keep that keep that in mind. It does also, just like most wide-angle lenses, uh, suffer a little of the uh, longitudinal color aberrations. You know, that's the uh, foreground, background, the green magenta. You know, um, show up in the again in the foreground and the background. It really only wide open by f2.8. It's kind of pretty much gone away, and from that point on, going up to scale, it is done in that regard. Same with its chromatic aberrations. You know, wide open under the right contrasty situation, you may see some purple fringing. Ew! But again, that can be taken care of uh, in your editing software. And same thing after after your uh, wide open starting to stop down that goes away same with coma yeah! you know shooting nighttime scenes you know the bat wings on the lights off in the distance wide open you may see some of that happening and we're not talking batman bat wings but similar um but, you know once you stop down a little that also goes away so um but they're still better than better than the G Master, um, Sony's G Master, twenty-four one point four, <laughs> suffers from those same things in a more severe way. So this actually outperforms the G Master in that uh, in that situation. Now your Boca uh, is decent. You know everybody likes the likes a nice bokeh, right? Rich, smooth, buttery bokeh. Right? Well, of course, with a 24 millimeter, you're, um, whether you choose to use this for, uh, for portraiture or not, like I said, I have the 85 Batis, so I'd probably be picking that one out of the lineup for a, for a portrait. But it's not to say you can't use this uh, for a portrait, especially full body portraits and whatnot. Um, but the bokeh is pleasing anyway. It's pleasing. Now the bokeh balls again under the right situation with lights. Um, you know, again, nighttime seeing, seeing lights and getting the bokeh balls in the grab background. You may notice onion ring. Onion ring effect. And again, again, those are caused by the atmospheric elements in there. But anyway. Some people it bothers them, some people it doesn't. Otherwise, it's, um, um, you know, the bokeh is pleasing for a, for a 25 millimeter. Sharpness, hey, it's pretty sharp. Now, even wide open, pretty sharp, but, um, you know, if you want noticeable sharpness across the entire screen, stop down one to uh, 2.8 and things look great from there. Um, F4, 5.6, so on and so on. 
um, you know, after you get past it, F11 and on, it start to you start to get a little softer at that point from diffraction and whatnot. But still, it's uh, it's Zeiss sharp. It has Zeiss Zeiss contrast. <laughs> has Zeiss warm colors and the 3D pop. That's what I'm talking about. Hmm. You know, for those who love that Zeiss combination you'll love this lens. For those who don't, hey, go for the, go for the Sony G Master, to which you'll pay more for, but, you know, um, but the thing, you, obviously, you get what you pay for, and that, that G Master does have certain benefits over, over this lens itself, but anyway, and this isn't cheap. I mean, normally, I think it retails, retails for, for like a, 1200 bucks or, oh, or or something like that. Oh, hi Dylan. Are you going to come in? Are you going to come in for a minute? Okay, come inside. Come here. No? no you just want... <laughs> Alright. So much for him coming in to co-host. He just wants he just wants a bottle of milk. <laughs> or a glass of milk. But anyway. Um, other than that, let me uh, let me get you some, some sample shots. And I used my, um, this is a Sony A7R3, and I shall mount this on the A7R3. And here's Johnny. All right, so here we have Dylan. Yeah. Everybody say hello, Dylan. No, not you say hello, Dylan. They say hello to you. You say hello, everybody. Hello, <laughs> hello, everybody. All right, so what have you brought to show us? What is that? It's a truck. It's a truck? Yeah. Wow. Do you, do you have one truck or many trucks? You, you have a lot of trucks? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you do. You've got cement trucks and garbage trucks and dump trucks and, and uh, loader trucks, all kinds of different trucks. Uh, and just trucks yeah so anyway uh what we're we doing oh we're gonna get a sample of the uh sample of the um nameplate on my canon m50 Yay! i used to shoot these uh shoot these videos and what i normally do is get a uh get a shot of the, again, the name plate on the camera itself. All right, Dylan, stop. Hang on. Hello. Uh-huh. All right, ready? Yeah. This is wide open, F2. One, two, three. <laughs> All right, good. Now, I'm not even going to show you any other one because hey it's sharp enough and really that's what we're looking at is our uh, 25 millimeter wide open anyway so that's that's good enough right um are you putting that back on the floor or you're gonna ride it around all right well he's gonna decide to ride the uh the toy it's not a rideable toy by the way but you're gonna make it a rideable toy good for you so anyway um well, other than that, I think I pretty much told you everything about the lens already. So, can we recommend it? Can we recommend it? Yes! Yes. You're making a lot of noise besides saying yes. So, come back. Back up here. Yeah, leave that over there. No, 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 Dylan. Where are you going? Huh? Oh, you're leaving? All right, bye-bye. Thanks for dropping by. I love you too, Dad. All right. So that was our cameo appearance from, uh, from our co-host. Not much co-hosting, but hey, he does his best, I guess, for a four-year-old. Anyhow, so yes, we can recommend it. Um, again, it's pricey. As I said, 1300 bucks or $1,200, bucks, um, brand new. But you know Dr. Scott and Modesty Photography right we're here to talk about tips and tricks about photography 
lenses, vintage stuff, camera stuff, everything, but saving money is kind of my thing. Cheap bastard. The modesty part of the photography. Uh, so go pee. You know where the bathroom is? You are pissing on my shoe. Hmm. Are you trying to ask for permission? Go, go. Um, but anyway, I get my stuff used, so I bought this. Uh, I bought, what was it, about 400 bucks used. So that's my thing. I like, I like uh, saving money. So I buy used. Oh, hold on a sec. Yeah, well, we got, just got back from uh, the bathroom. Hey, not that this has anything to do with camera talk, but just a little share between myself and fellow daddies that are out there, or mommies watching. Dylan had his first poop today. Whoop de fucking do! Well, not his first poop, obviously. He's four years old, but first poop in the toilet. He fought with his tooth and nail for months and months and months about diaper, diaper, gotta have the diaper to go poop. He could pee in the toilet without any issues, but he didn't like to poop. He wanted to use the diaper. So we finally said no more diapers. The world ran out of diapers. We can't buy any more. Get the fuck out of here. So today he pooped in the toilet. Yay, big celebration. So anyhow, <laughs> back, back to what we're talking about. Yes, I can recommend this lens. Yes, it's expensive, but hey, get it, get it used. I mean, nothing wrong with used equipment. Most of the stuff I have is used. The camera was used. My Leica stuff was used. Well, this 35 was brand new, but my, my uh, Lumix used, you know, again, all this uh, vintage stuff, everything's my GRX3, my other Sony's, my Canon's, all used, 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 you know, um, save money, right? Anyhow, um, well, how about our little plug for our photo editing software that we use? And who do we use or who do I use? I use Luminar. Luminar Neo is their latest greatest. It's full of AI, full of something. Right. This mission is too important for me to allow you to jeopardize it. And, uh, you know, some of, the, some of the great features of the thing with stuff with AI is our, our good example would be spot and dust removal. If you're down at the beach taking some photos of some hot chicks. And you get home, pull those hot chicks up on the, on the monitor. <gasps> and lo and behold, you know, in the background, you see some seagulls flying around, but you can see these big spots in there too. And you're like, what the hell are these spots? Are they like UFOs? What the hell? What, what are these? Well, what they are is a result of a dirty sensor. And because you take the lens on and off, on and off, eventually stuff gets on your sensor and it shows up mostly in things like skies because they're, you know, nice and wide open. So anyway, uh, Luminar has a button underneath the erase field called spot and dust remover. And what it does is it will analyze, here's where the AI part comes in. It analyzes your photo and it recognizes the difference between spots and a flock of seagulls birds and it will remove the spots and leave the birds alone that's pretty cool Yay! um but i said the same thing with power lines right everybody's had issues with power lines before and you have to erase them and, you know and this and it takes time well it has a button called power line removal same thing it'll analyze your photo uh which may have power lines all over the place and it'll recognize the power lines and remove them for you. Now, of course, if you have many other straight lines in the building or shadow, this and that, it may struggle here and there, because as you know, AI is definitely not the perfect thing everybody would like it to be. You talking to me? So uh, you may have to clean up a little here and there, but still, it's, it saves a bunch of time, but just by having it analyze it and, and erase them for you. Yeah! That's pretty cool. It has background removal, 
uh, if you're doing a lot of masking and stuff, has masking AI, um, scene relighting. You know, if you want to shift the light around the scene from one spot to another, you know, it's not spotlight, but it'll shift the sense of light somewhere else. Uh, sky replacement, you know, a lot, most programs have that stuff these days, but still, it, it's cool. Anyway, I'm not going to go on and on, but, um, but it, it, you know, it's, it's a cool program. Greatest part for me is that it's economical. As I said, modesty photography, all about saving money and, and things like this. Click on the link below in the description. You'll see a link with Dr. Scott in there. And click on that. It'll take you to Skylum, who's the producer of Luminar. And nothing to do with Skynet. I'll be back. You have AI. Uh, but Skylum, um, who's located in Ukraine, and everybody knows what's going on there, right? Well, um... If, if you buy the program through that link, it'll take $10 off and give you a $10 discount, which is nice because everybody could save 10 bucks, right? And what do they do with that 10 bucks? Talk, talk it out, man. Um, well, they give it to me so that I can do that with my 10 bucks. But still, it's um, any kind of savings is better than nothing, right? And uh, there's two different ways you could pay for it, either do the monthly subscription thing or yearly or just buy it outright, which I do because I don't like to pay for things long term because you end up paying more than you would have if you just bought it in the first place. So I just buy it. It's mine. Um, but anyhow, other than that, uh, what else can you do to, uh, you know, help support us? Hey, where are the white women at? Besides give us money, of course. I'm not asking for any. But you can subscribe. That's right. The more the merrier. Subscribe. And call your friends. Call your mom. Tell everybody. Subscribe. And what does YouTube like besides subscribers? <laughs> oh, and besides that, what else does YouTube like? Well, they like the thumbs up, right? And if you give us a thumbs up, we'll give you a little taste of the thumbs up girls. And what do I mean by the thumbs up girls? Well, it's Dylan's girlfriends. Um, they do this song where the thumbs up thing. I don't know the name of the group or the name of the song, but it goes something like this. Thumbs up, do 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 Thumbs up. Aren't they cute? Uh, so anyway, Dylan's got the hots for them. Still has got the hots for a number of things, but uh, I'm just happy you pooped in the toilet. Yeah. So anyway, um, other than that, well, who are we? As I said, I'm Dr. Scott. He's Dylan. I'm Spartacus. Bond. James Bond. And together we are all collectively modesty photography. <laughs> Excuse me. Here to talk about Tips and tricks about photography, vintage lenses, vintage cameras, camera systems, photography, t you know, tricks or tips, um, you name it, we'll talk about it. You know, last week we talked about, uh, <clears throat> what did we talk about? Adapters. We talked about microphones. We'll talk about, we'll talk about tripods. We'll talk about cages. We'll talk about anything photography related. If you want, just leave a comment in the uh, description below or in the comment field below, and, uh, and we'll, we'll consider it. Anyhow, um, thanks for dropping by. Thanks for listening. Thanks for subscribing. Thank you for the thumbs up. Thank you for buying a copy of Luminar through our link. And thank you for just being you. Thank you. And why is that a big deal? Well, because you belong here. That's right. And where do you belong? Well, this was Camera Talk with Dr. Scott and his little co-host, Dylan. <laughs> That's right. So come on back next week. We do one of these every Friday, or try to. And um, remember, that's Vietnam time, right? So 
Friday for you, maybe a different day, maybe the day before, the day after, or it could be the same day, depending on what funky time zone you're in. Anyway, so come on back, we'll do this again, and I want to see you on the rebound, all right? So take care, take care of yourself, play safe. You're free to go. All right. See you later. Bye-bye. Here I am. Here I am.